this video, I'll show how to build a quick and simple trill effect in Reactor using only primary modules. Now, what a trill is, is a monophonic form of voice handling that allows you to hold down several notes at once, and when you release the most recently pressed note, it will the pitch will jump to the uh, next most recently pressed note and so it's a way to create really quick note presses uh, similar to a hammer-on or pull-off effect from a guitar. So let's get started. So as I mentioned this is a monophonic effect but unfortunately the built-in mono MIDI handlers that Reactor comes with are not really going to cut it so we're actually going to have to start with some polyphonic MIDI handlers and use some voice combiners to make some monophonic si signals out of them. So whenever we receive a new gate value I'm simply going to trigger the note pitch on that voice and send that through a voice combiner. And this is going to end up differing from the factory MIDI handlers because in a factory MIDI handler if you hold down two notes at the same time and then release the first note, uh, neither the gate nor the note pitch modules will send an output for that because the uh, event was not in, on the active voice any longer. So this way, whenever we release a note, regardless of whether it's our active note or not, we'll get a gate off effect for that, which will allow us to remove that note from our table of pressed notes. And I'm going to create that table right now. It has 128 elements, one for each MIDI note. So whenever we get a new gate value, we want to set the an index on the table to a value that is either equal to 0 if the gate is equal to 0 or to a number that gives us the order in which the note was pressed if the gate is greater than 0. So I'm going to compare the gate to 0 and multiply it by another value. And so this way we'll always be setting our index of the table to zero if the gate that we've just received is equal to zero. And then we're going to send the gate through a separator. And anytime the gate is greater than zero, we're going to send a value of one to an accumulator. And this accumulator is storing the number of gate on values that we've received. So if the gate is on, we will store the total number of notes received into the appropriate index of the event table. And the index is, of course, determined by the note pitch. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is send out our new pitch value and gate value if the gate is greater than zero. Now, typically a trill effect is accompanied by a legato voice handling system, which I'm not going to have time to implement in this tutorial, but I will uh, cover it in a future tutorial. We'll improve this to uh, send legato gate signals. For now, we're simply going to trigger our pitch value on a new gate and send out any gate that's greater than zero to a gate output as well. And these are both going to have merges in front of them because we're going to need to have more values being sent to these pitch and gate outputs depending on if the uh, incoming gate is actually less than or I mean or is equal to zero. 
And if the gate is equal to zero, so we've just had a voice let up, we need to read through the entire event table and find the uh, note pitch with the highest value written to its index. So to that end, I'm going to create an iteration module that gets triggered whenever a gate off event is received. And we'll have an increment value of 1 with a total of 127 extra events. And we will first set the read index of the event table, and then we'll read out a value. And the let's do the processing for this effect in a separate macro, because it's going to require bunch of different modules and be a little bit complicated. just want to keep everything looking clean and simple out here. And this macro is going to receive our index value, the gate value from our iterator, and the output of our event table. And we can start working with the gate output of the iterator. And this is going to send a value of 1 before the iteration starts, and it'll send a value of 0 when the iteration is over. So what we're going to use this to set a few values to a default amount, and then we're going to read through the table and try to find a value larger than 0 in the table. And if we do, we're going to store the index or pitch of that table value. And when we're done iterating, we'll use the off gate from the iteration module to read out our index or pitch value. So to begin with, I'm just using the uh, gate on value to set this e value here to equal to zero. So as we're receiving new events from our table, we want to compare them to this stored value here. And if they are larger than the stored value, then we the, our incoming event will become the new stored value. So we can do this using an order module and a separator. And we'll set the threshold of the separator to the currently stored value. And if our new value is larger, then it will end up going out the high output of the separator and can flow back into the merge module and into the value module. So similarly, when we start our iteration, we're going to set our stored pitch value to negative 1. And if we get a value that's larger than our current stored value, then we can trigger our current index to be stored as our current pitch. So we'll create a very similar structure here. And we'll trigger the index uh, being stored in our value here with the high output of the separator as well. And finally, we can use the low output of the separator to read out our final index value. And if this value is greater than negative 1, then we have a new pitch. And if it's less than, or rather equal to negative 1, sorry, um, then that means there are no more pitches of notes that are currently being held stored in our table, so we can set the gate value to off. So we use a separator module and compare our pitch to negative 1. And if we can just send the high output to a new pitch value, and well, we can trigger a 0 off the low output to control a new gate value. And the pitch and gate val uh, outputs of this macro will merge into the pitch and gate macros uh, outputs for the parent macro, which is why we created those merge modules at the beginning.
All right, now we just have a few quick things to do and we'll be all finished. First of all, we want to set everything other than the uh, mono pitch gate macro to be mono. And oh, it looks like I forget to put a voice combiner uh, in the gate stream here. So I'll just add a voice combiner here like so. And we should have done that mm -hmm. in the first minute of the tutorial, but I forgot. Sorry about that. And the last thing we want to be able to do is set the event table so it has an arbitrarily large value size. We're never resetting the accumulator, so the values that are stored in the event table are just going to keep getting larger. So I'm just going to set it to something ridiculous like a million. If someone wants to press more than a million buttons while they have this open, that's on them, I guess. <laughs> So that's all I have time for right now. Um, in a future tutorial, I'm going to add Glide and a Legato effect to this as well.